Uh, any additions to the agenda tonight? No. Open public comments agenda items only. Seeing none. Appointing Chris Parker to the Solid Waste Committee. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded to appoint Chris Parker to the Solid Waste Committee. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Abstain. <coughs> appointing Chris Parker to be the representative for the Wyndham Solid Waste Management District. I move that we appoint Christopher Parker as representative to the Wyndham Solid Waste Management District. Second. <laughs> Moved and seconded to appoint okay. Chris to the Wyndham Solid Waste Management District. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 <coughs> those opposed? Should that be a recusal? Or okay, call it what you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Call it whatever you want to call it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, we're here tonight to uh, talk about pay as you throw. Um, everybody was on a big strand of emails that went back and forth that brought about some information that we could be in arrears significantly by the end of this fiscal year for the pay as you throw for the pay as you throw program. So, um, Cindy, if you want to come up, and Kathy, if you'd like to come up, you're more than welcome to as well since you're here. <coughs> so has this spreadsheet been shared with either of them? I gave one to Cindy. Okay. Perfect. Kathy like one? Sure. We have an extra. So we got a couple of um, different spreadsheets. People in my packet together. I really wish I had my trash can. It had the staple pull on it. And so we have the 1718 and the 1819 spreadsheets that we got from Cindy um, for expenses and income. We have an analysis spreadsheet that was done by Michelle on those numbers. And we have within your town report, and I don't know if everybody brought it today, but do we know what page that's on? Page 10. Page 10. Doesn't have a number 10 on it. It doesn't have the number 10 on it. You're right. I'm looking for the Good thing the one next to it says 11. It's the one before 11. Okay. All right. So, what we're attempting to do is figure out what numbers are correct. So we can make a decision on an increase of the pay as you throw bags. Cindy uh, brought about the numbers of $20 for large bags and $15 for small bags as her proposed increase based on what she was seeing. Um, which doesn't seem too far off um, from what Michelle's spreadsheet says. The problem that I'm having is that we have a couple of different sets of numbers, so mm -hmm. I need to know what the variations are and which ones are right. Okay. Because if I'm looking at the book, yeah, if I'm looking at the pay as you throw report for seventeen eighteen. Yep. Okay. If you take in under expense, if you go down to the June one and you you take that off and then you deduct the expenses from the income, the difference is the 2052.15 because that bill, those bills were not paid until FY 1819. But as of June 30th, we had $2,052.15 in the account. 
Um, but then, of course, bills came in in um, July, at, at the end of July for, for, I mean, end of July. Yeah, the end of July, which were actually for June. So, but as of June thirtieth, we had two thousand fifty-two dollars and fifteen, or two thousand, yeah, fifty-two dollars and fifteen cents in the account. At, okay. As of June thirtieth. Now, you, what, what's the, why is there a variation between your their seventeen eighteen spreadsheet and the seventeen eighteen report? Is uh, that what you were just explain, trying to explain to me? Yeah. Mm. That five thousand six thirteen eighty had not come in until the end of July. So when we did the report as of June 30th, that that's not taken account in there because I have to show what it was as of June 30th. Okay, did we have that? No, because this was the first year, so we wouldn't have had that same issue coming from 1617. No, no, because we used to be, it used to be part of solid waste. Can I give a bit of history for a minute? Sure. When we started the Pay As You Throw program, uh, Michael Kudemarsh was in charge of it. And he decided to make it part of the solid waste fund. So we asked for, we had no startup costs, we used the money from the solid waste. Well, we found that we were depleting the solid waste fund, so last, for seventeen eighteen, we made a separate fund, which was Pay As You Throw. However, we didn't put any startup money in there either, so we started out with a zero balance. And then we were we would have been fine. It was working its way. It was working fine until we had to buy trash bags, which was a big six thousand five hundred fifty dollars came out of that fund. And we're now we're trying to replenish it. But the, in the last six weeks, our bag sales have gone down. Our rolls have gone down. So I don't know if it's just time of year. I I, mean, I have no way of knowing if they're going to go back up. If people have found other ways of getting rid of their trash. But so so. If we had had the, some startup money in there, then we wouldn't have this problem. Well, we've tried to correct this at least twice that I'm aware of, because we raised back prices once, then we lowered them but back down. that's back when it was still part of solid waste. Right. When we started the pay-as-you-throw fund, we put nothing in it. So the pay-as-you-throw bag money didn't go from solid waste into the pay-as-you-throw fund? No, I had to go through. I had to go through, and I did the, Kathy and I did the spreadsheet, and it came out that we were, we broke even. There was no money to put over. So we went through the whole thing. There was no money to transfer over. Or, I mean, as it was, our solid waste <coughs> was a huge hit. We had a, we had a relatively um, healthy pay, uh, solid waste fund, and it's not healthy anymore. Um, it, what we needed is we really needed to, when we started the page of throw, we needed to say a one-time um, article to put some money in there so we would have money to buy the bags. Because we had, to, the first year we had to buy the bags, we had to buy the um, recycle bins and everything. S and Solid Waste paid for both, paid for that. Okay, I, I do have a question on your seventeen eighteen spreadsheet. You answered the expense side for me. Yeah. But your income on your spreadsheet says sixty-seven seven forty-three sixty. Your income on yes. your pay as you throw within the book is sixty-seven five zero four sixty-two. We had a tiny bit of money that came in from the library after, and that came in in July as well. Okay. So there's a tiny little bit of money there. But I just wanted to show you that when I did it, I wanted to show you what what belonged with each fiscal year, even though it wasn't didn't necessarily happen until the next fiscal year. Yeah. In the in the expense side, you're saying that if we subtract that fifty six thirteen eighty, it should match your sixty five four fifty two forty seven in the book, right? Yes. yes. Which it doesn't. It's it doesn't. No, it's a couple hundred dollars off. The balance matches though. Yeah. If you do it, the balance will match. Yeah, the balance. That could, well, that could be, that could be this, um, how, do you know how much exactly it is? It's 238.98 is the difference between what's in the book and your expense line minus the 56.13.80. I knew now we had some, on the expense line? Yep. 
uh, I just took all the figures for exactly what should have been in the fiscal year when I did my spreadsheet, but the book does not does not take into account not things that happen after the fiscal year um, and ended. I'm not a I'm not a math wizard, so I'm just trying to do this okay. in my uh, uninfinite wisdom of accounting. So the difference between your uh, the difference between the expense on here and here is the three is the two thirty eight ninety eight. The difference between your income on this spreadsheet mm -hmm. and the income in here is the same two thirty eight ninety eight. That's odd. It's exactly the same difference. I would have to go I would have to look as to why because I took the numbers right off of where I got Yeah, because if you take the sixty seven seven forty three sixty yeah. and subtract your um, 67, 504, 62, mm -hmm. which you said was extra money from the library. So the yeah. library essentially gave you $238.98. But the odd part is, is that it's our expenses same. is exactly 68, or excuse me, $238.98 difference. That's, it's odd. I don't know why, because I, when I did it down and everything, it, it equaled out to what I had. So I, I mean, the difference between, if you take off that, June expense and what I said, what shows the book is, is the same. I can, I'd be more than happy to look and look that up and see what the two thirty eight ninety eight is, and get and let you know. Yeah. Um, so, so Sam, <clears throat> um, in the book, without the June expense, mm -hmm. um, sixty five thousand four fifty two and forty seven cents. Mm -hmm. You add in the fifty six thirteen and eighty cents that comes up to a expense for the year seventy one thousand sixty six dollars and twenty seven cents. So there's a two thirty eight difference. Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. I okay. don't know what that I, I don't off the top of my head know what that is. Yeah. But I'd be happy to look it up for you. Yeah, it's just really strange that it matches perfectly. And the numbers that you gave us for the roles uh, sold per the treasurer, and I'm looking up what this this spreadsheet here. Which one? This one? The one that Michelle did, yeah. Okay. Um, the expense on that um, particular one doesn't um, doesn't jive with either of those. Well, there doesn't doesn't match the income. Sorry. Um, Where's where are you looking for the income? I don't know where she got her figures from, so. You. The they all came from your emails. I just, oh, I just did them all. The, okay. the math on the number of bags sold. That's all I did. Well, That's I went, the 66,000. Um, I went through. 112. Well, remember, there was a price change in there. In 1718? Yes. There was a, OK. Then this I doesn't take into account yeah. price change. I think it. I think it. I think it was up, and then they dropped it down. Yeah, we. It yeah. went way up, and then they dropped we it back down. We did drop it. Yeah. So the, there was a price change in there. It was lower. I don't remember why. So that happened in like the first two weeks I was here. Yeah. That was so that had to be like June or early July. So I. Oh. I don't know. I, I, can, I can go back and look and find in the price change. But I didn't know. Actually, I think it was in sixteen. Then. It was really shortly after I got here. I can I can look but and see when the price changes were, but there was can a price change. Can we hear what Emily is saying? Oh, I'm sorry. 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 I have to be on I? Uh, I just I remember being on the select board when that price change happened. I don't remember when it was, but I think I got off. In yeah, it changed twice. It did change twice. Yes. I, mean, I know about one of them because there was a whole. Yeah, went, board, we, but we, it we went, went way we up and then we dropped it back down. Okay. And I, I can look that up that, um, for you to find out exactly when that happened, but I know there was two price changes. And I went through all of the, I physically went through all of the um, 
things that are turned in to me and counted the bags. That's what took so long to get those, the second bunch of paperwork to you and counted what everybody wrote down that they sold. So that came right off each department's. And is that the first time that there's been an inventory done on these bags? No, um, back yeah. in 16, 17, um, it was, the way it was done was um, one person yeah. took, took mm -hmm. bags from the um, North School. Anybody needed bags, they went to this one person. That person got the bags for them and gave them to them and kept track. And then once a, once a month, that person would come and sit with me and we would go over and we would make sure that my, what my inventory said and what was over there was the same. After that person was no longer doing it, there was no one to do it. And more than one, you know, nobody was, they were trying to keep me apprised when they took them, but I wasn't getting told. So I had no idea what the inventory was. And I had told Heather Frost a couple of times that I don't have anyone that's doing the inventory with me like they used to be. Somebody needs to go over and inventory it. Finally, about a month ago, she went over with Tim and they counted the boxes. And now Tim has a paper over there, and every time a one's taken, the person, a person's supposed to write, they took one or two or whatever, large or small. And then we're going to go over every, uh, every <coughs> month, and we're going to get that information and so I can have it in my office. But it, up until that point, they, it was inventory. So how long of a span was it not inventory? From June 30th of 17 until Sorry. about a month ago, I tried my best, but people were going in there and taking them and so, finding So can you, I'm just curious, uh, how many individuals have that liberty to Well, I know out? Tim oh. does. Right. Um, I know Seth does, and I don't know, I don't know if anyone else does. Jean usually asks me, and then I give her one from my office, and then I get another one from Tim. There's been a few times where Tim has forgotten to tell me, you know, and it's hard because he gets busy, very busy in his office. If he doesn't come right in and tell me, he, uh, there was a few times he forgot, and I would remind him. Um, and he's, he's really, he tries really hard to do that, but just having the paper over there is going to be a lot easier because it's being done right as you take them. And um, I don't know, um, I don't know of anyone else, I mean, because it's Guilford, we take them theirs, and Tim Ferret comes and picks his up from my office. But I think this will work um, if we do it, you know, with that paper over there and, and, and we doing it on a monthly basis. Do we have a real bag count right now? Yes, I know we do. I know what you sent was in cases, but I know that the wreck and Colebrook and Guilford all have broken cases. Yes, we, so. I only did the cases, um, what we had for full cases. I don't know. Uh, Tim um, gives me an inventory of what he has every week. June, June does monthly. I mean, Jean. <laughs> June, Jean does monthly. And, um, I do every week when I go to Guilford. Does, I give yeah, her okay. the count. Tim Ferret comes and gets his own as he needs them. So he only buys rolls, you know, a few rolls at a time. He comes up, bring, when he runs out, he comes and gets more. So, and then, um, so I didn't take those into account. What I took into account is what we have, physic what we have right now in the North School. Mm -hmm. So we are losing money. I don't think, like, I, I keep, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I really don't think it would be, we would be looking at this, like this, if we had had startup money. <coughs> That's why in one of my emails I said another thought would be to take the money from the reserve fund we have, the, the startup money, which I would say would be the amount we paid for the bags. That way we have that cushion. So when we need to buy bags, we're not dipping into our income. Either that or we could have a... a special sale for the month of March. If you buy five rolls or more, you get a cheaper price. <laughs> then we could just get a big influx of money come in. So what would it matter if there was startup money there or not? I mean, if the numbers don't add up, then explain it to me. I'm, I'm well, part there, of the so. expense, part of the expense is, to, is the bags. Yep. Okay. Which we have to buy. I understand that. And then we have them sitting over there waiting to sell. In the meantime, we have other expenses coming in on a monthly basis, so we, we're using our income to pay those, but 
the bags is a big lump sum that comes out all at once. So in your numbers, in the expense numbers on your spreadsheet, does that include the bags or is that just our monthly tipping fees and stuff from Triple T? On the 1718, you asked me for the income and expense, which I gave you. We bought bags in June of 17, so we didn't have to buy any bags in 1718. Okay. We bought so them. Of, so none of this so expense right, has bags. It this, has bag This one does. In it. The 1819 mm -hmm. does. The 1819 does. Yeah, this, that 12, 835. Yes. Yep. So, so. So, because we bought bags in June of 17, it went on that fiscal year, which came out of the solid waste fund. Yeah. And 65.50 of that is bags out of that 12. Yes. 835. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. So, if we had this startup, it would be reimbursed over the time. Is that the idea? Well, I, I think. Yeah, by the, by the sales of the bags. Yes. We can't use solid waste funds for pay as you throw, though, no. right? No. So that's why. So where is reserved. the startup funds? She's saying reserve. I was saying if we we have a reserve fund that is they set up that is at the discretion of the select board. It's got right now. It's got fifty thousand dollars and a few hundred dollars in it. Yeah. And I was saying one of the options could be to take that six five fifty out of there so that we can. Have as our startup money because we never had any startup money. It's really hard to start a program with, and you're, you're starting out in the hole. If it wasn't for the solid waste fund, we would we would we would have been in a really big mess. Right. And the solid waste fund took a huge hit. Yeah. All right, so this is the first time I'm seeing these numbers, but um, all right, so if we look at 1718, yeah. which did not include a bag purchase, is that correct? Correct. Okay, so which is kind of nice because what we have pictured for 1718 is it, it's short $3,500. Um, if we were to look at that as kind of um, a benchmark year, and we had included the bags, and we, you said 65.50 mm -hmm. was the bag price. Yes. So if we assume that we purchased, made that same purchase in 17, 18, yeah. that would put us in the hole about 10 grand. So that's like almost your, your benchmark year. You've got your income, your expenses, you add in, you know, the one, because when we purchase, is it about a year's worth that we purchase? Um, yes. Okay. So, so if, if Except, we look well, at... Well, let me rephrase that. The first year we bought, um, small, large, and the containers. Yeah. This last time we only bought large because right, we, we had, had plenty of small. Of small ones. Yeah. Right. So, okay. So it, when we get low on small ones, eventually, right. someday. Um, <laughs> Which I hear is a long time in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so, but <clears throat> excuse me, but seventeen, eighteen would be a great benchmark here because we have our income. Um, and we have our expenses. If we add in the expected, you know, years worth of purchases of bags of the 65.50, we're short about 10 grand. So at, and we don't know when the, the price increase or decrease right. happened, but <coughs> we'll just assume that there wasn't one just for the sake of, of arguing. So that puts us short about 10 grand every year. So I would say like, yes, it's probably as a start, uh, I mean, it may be because of the startup costs, but if, if we're short about 10 grand every year, then I would say that we would need to increase the bag prices. Um, I don't know to what level, because I just saw Michelle's spreadsheet and I haven't analyzed that, or if there's even a forecast in there for bag prices. But yeah, she yep. does. She does, all right. <clears throat> um, I suggested going back to, to the amount that we had the first time we increased, so it would be $20 for large and yeah. Which is an extra fifty cents a bag, is that right? Yeah. For if you buy a bundle, if you buy a yeah, bag. yeah. Um, okay. I mean, that would be my recommendation. If if we're looking at a loss of thirty five hundred with no bag purchases, and you add in the bag purchases, then we're short about ten grand for an entire year, um, and that's not sustainable. So what you know, um, I would say that that's just operating expenses that doesn't right. take into account the startup I mean as far as the recycling bins that's not part of this anyway because no, that's recycling not pay as you throw well, right. so we don't really need to worry about that that was done in the, the solid waste fund which is fine because recycling is still happens in the solid waste fund 
Yes. Right. Um, so just looking at pay as you throw, I, I would. Uh, it sounds to me like a bag price increase is warranted if we're going to lose ten grand that's, a year. That's um, and I didn't. Um, that is um, so and I'm looking at 2018-19. With the totals that we have so far, we're short 2680, but we don't have February expenses. Correct. Um, we still got the so, rest of the I mean, year. if that's another five grand, <coughs> you know, approximating what we had before, right. um, if that's an additional 5,000, now we're looking at we're short 7,600 so far this year. So it looks like we're on track to be short, you know, about 10 grand again this Unfortunately, year. Unfortunately, our sales have, to, our draw, have dropped. They are, but I looked very, very quickly. Um, I mean, February was a was a, a slow month in seventeen eighteen as well. Um, yep. I mean, there's some variation for sure, and and we're never going to be able to. But I wouldn't I wouldn't go crazy with the the sales being low in the last three months because you know there's there's a couple months in seventeen eighteen yeah, that were low as that's well. That's what too, I, I don't so. know. I have no way of knowing if it's just. Because right. it's winter. But at the same or, time, I mean, if, if our bag sales are down, then, then theoretically our tonnage is down too. And so that expense is going to decrease, you know, hopefully in the same proportion as our bag sales, which is, I think, tonnage is the biggest yes. expense versus <coughs> hauling, right? right? So, I mean, so if the bag sales are down, then our tonnage should be down as well. Um, the hauling, we can't do anything about. That's a constant expense. Right. Yeah. But um, so I wouldn't freak out about the, the bag sales going down um, and I think they're going to rebound I mean if, if we continue to see a drop then it's worth revisiting but okay well I just asked Michelle to look when when we had the decrease because at first we did an increase and then we did, we a, did decrease. a huge increase in a little yeah back. so the so the decrease actually happened effective July 1st 2016 so it has okay. so it has no bearing on okay. these 17 I wasn't sure when 17, I knew 18, was no, 17 18 numbers at all but so that brings me back to my question with the with the roles that you reported that we sold yep. the these numbers don't match. Well, I can't. I can't answer as to why because I took that off with the people hand in to me. You know, they ke each department keeps track of what they sell. I went through each each sheet, and that's what they gave me. For the only way I would be able to track it exactly is if I was the only one selling them, because I have to take the word of the. Uh, you know, I have to take what the other people turn into me. That's fine, but if 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 we're getting report numbers that are wrong, that means that there's, and I'm not saying this is happening, that means there's possible theft. I understand what you're saying. And, and we have to know that. We can't just say, oh, that's what they gave us, I and, and walk away from the table. We, we have to, oh, I'm not saying that, oh, well, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that's the only, because we didn't track it, other than each depart department tracking their own, I have I can only go by what they gave me and I went through each sheet and double checked them each week and double checked them and that's what I came up with for my totals the only way would be the I can think of would be if I was the only one selling bags and no the only way to do it is is to have an inventory and, and get accurate counts from the people that are that are selling the bags and if we're not getting any accurate count from people that are selling the bags I mean, each per then, each department at the you know like Tim does it weekly. They take their beginning inventory. They put they they put what their beginning inventory is. They put what their sales are, and then they put their ending ending inventory. I'm assuming that they're double checking to make sure that they're not they're not just putting sticking numbers in there. Jean does the same thing. Um, Kathy does Guilford, and yeah, and I'm actually looking at this in incorrectly as well we actually brought in on paper we brought in more money than the bags that we sold okay i understand but but this is part of the treasurer accounting function is is for this not to happen is because if we're just throwing numbers on a spreadsheet i can do that and i and i have no ability in math i have no ability as a treasurer i can i can take somebody's numbers throw it on a piece of paper and hand it to the select board and say hey this is how we're doing this is part of the accounting and, and process of, of running the town. The, I guess that's my concern. 
is, and I know you're getting numbers reported from somebody else, so we need to figure out, A, how to get numbers reported from other people correctly, and B, how do you catch it when they're not reporting you correct numbers? Well, what I would have to do then, I would assume, and I, and I will do this if this is what the wish of the board is, when Tim does his, does his bags, I go out and count the bags with them and make sure what they say they have is what they have, and then t keep track of their sale. And do, I'd have to do the same thing in the library, and I'd have to do the same thing because so do they, do they're they... relying on, we're relying on each other departments to sell the bags. Do they give you a spreadsheet or do they just say, this is how much money we brought? No, I get a spreadsheet. Okay. And it shows how many bags or, they, like, or how many rolls and then sold. the income? Yeah. To those? Then how did this go this wrong? Well, they didn't have an inventory to start with. It. You just, just got the inventory done. Well, the inventory. But there was an inventory was to an start inventory. with, and then yeah. we, for some reason, didn't do an inventory for what a year and a half. There was no one that was. There, there is always somebody that can do an inventory yeah. when it comes to town's money. So, I mean, that is just and that again, excuse is unacceptable. Well, that there is nobody to do an Chris, inventory. Because we don't have keys to the building, so I and I I'm not saying that it has, to, but to all, say that nobody can do an inventory in a year and a half is someone absurd. Someone should have been given the chore to do it when the other person wasn't doing it anymore. One of the things about inventorying, um, we can Im somebody can inventory, say, Tim, go in three o'clock, inventory his bags. But unless you suspend all sales, you're going to have a fluctuation because you're going to continue to sell bags. When I would go over to Guilford and I'd pick up their money, I would inventory the number of rolls that they had in each case. How many how many remaining rolls? And I would take the money they gave me, minus out the rolls that they still had, and then that would equal the number of rolls that they sold. And and Kathy's still doing yes, that, right? I still do okay. That, yes. Now to do that for every department that sells bags, that means each whoever's selling the bags have to do that but then also unless you're suspending sales and says for the next however long no sales because if you sell a bag then that's going to throw your inventory off wouldn't it would fall on the following inventory yeah that's how inventory works yeah, yeah. You that, that's how retail sales. stores work they don't suspend sales they keep selling after right. they do their inventory they used to run a retail store right but if they don't carry if they don't carry that over, then you're going to wind up your, with your inventory. When you do the inventory, and then any sale that comes in after that inventory, I mean, we're not talking about millions of things here. We're talking yeah. about a few rolls of bags. So yeah, I, I realize mean, that. But we're so also there's there's no necessity to suspend sales. No. Your inventory would be your inventory, and then any sales that come in from that point on would hit the following month's inventory. Right. But I'm also saying that. We're also not relying on, you know, computers and barcodes and this, that, and next thing. We're relying on people to make counts while doing other things and selling bags at the same time. And it's an imperfect system. You're not going to have a perfect 100% count each and every time. So here, here's, here's my response, and, and thank you for your two cents. I understand it's an imperfect system. I understand that we're relying on other people, but to be ten thousand dollars off or seventy five hundred in, in this fiscal year is is your estimation, um, which it looks like we're already seventy six off <coughs> as, of, as of February. So it's going to end up being more like ten. There is no possible way that Gene and Seth. And because those are the only two that we don't really get an inventory from, because we, because you do, well, when Jane does an you inventory, do that one. Seth does an, and, an inventory, and Tim does. So how can we be ten thousand dollars off and not know until I start emailing you and set asking all these questions? And there's never been an alert to the board or the Solid Waste Committee. Yes, I know there they, was an alert I know to the Solid Waste Committee. I, sp I gave sent two emails to. Okay, Heather when Ross. was that? 
August 16th I sent her one and January 17th of this year I sent her one. She... So January was last month. Yes. And I, I sent her and I, I gave her the, the sales and the income. Mm -hmm. And she said to me, it looks like we're going to... And Kathy can be my witness. She, it looks like we're going to have to raise the prices. I'll kept, and she was going to talk to the committee and make a recommendation. And the next thing I know... I didn't hear anything, so I'm like, well, maybe they decided to wait a little longer. So I followed I, the protocol that I was told to follow, which was to go to the committee. I don't see yeah. how, please, go ahead. We are at fault for the inventory because when the, that position was done away with, we did not assign that to anybody else. That, that falls back on us. We didn't put that in anybody's job description, so it's our fault. That the inventory wasn't kept up so um and i apologize that we <coughs> i couldn't think of it either. um and i as for how the numbers get skewed i think cindy and, and michelle need to, to work together and see figure out why we have these different numbers but um because i i trust the people that are doing it and it's and we, we probably have to raise raise the rights no, we, we definitely yeah. have to raise the rates. My, my biggest concern is how did it get this bad because without we felt, anybody we felt knowing? I don't think anybody on this board asked about it until all of a sudden, hey, we need to look into this. We are at fault. No, I don't agree. Well, if, if, we don't often. If, if, the, <laughs> if the person that sits in the position that is taking care of the town's money, and I understand you went to Heather, and I understand you went in August and in July. That's a pretty August big. August and January. Sorry, August and January. That's a pretty big span of time, and just in my own thinking, and and you can hang on to that protocol as hard as you want to. You probably should have gone to the select board and said, "Listen, I, I went to her on the in August, and it's just getting worse. Now it's January." The last the, time I went to the, the solid board waste committee has a protocol. You told me I was wasting your time. You said I'm wasting Cindy, your time with the select Cindy, board. Cindy, keep turning blame to everybody I'm else. Not, These you, numbers fall the in your wheelhouse. I, I, this is what you get paid to do. I realize period. that. I followed the protocol that I was told to follow. It's not my fault that you told me not to waste the select board's time to follow the protocol. And I did that. And oh, I, I have the... I have the email showing that I sent it to Heather. Cindy, Heather and I discussed you it. screwed up. So that's that's all I have to say. The numbers are screwed up. Somebody should have alerted somebody if you knew that nothing was happening. Walk into Michelle's office. Don't go to the select board. Don't come to the select board because they told you not to. Walk into Michelle's office and say, hey, I got in hold of Heather in August. We're still going downhill on this quick. Can you look, help help me bring this to the select board? Call Heather for me. Do something to help instead of because what if Heather never responded to you? What if I never sent this email? We were just going to let pays you throw go into the garbage, negative ten thousand dollars. And when you did report your reporting at the end of the year, you would throw your hands up and say, "I went to the solid waste committee. They never did anything about it." I'm sorry, we're $10,000 in the hole. But no, because you wouldn't have done that because that's against protocol. So the next year we'd be another $10,000 in a hole and the next year would be another $10,000 in the hole. At, at some point, common sense has to kick in and say, this is not working. So I need to find somebody to help me make it work because the Solid Waste Committee is not responding to me, right? I mean, am I totally insane in thinking that never talking to anybody when Michelle's five steps down the hall and she could very easily get in touch with me if, if I told you protocol is, is to not come to the select board, which, you know, in that particular case, I believe I did. I don't even remember what it was. Don't care. But so you were never going to tell anybody about, about this. You would just continue to tell the solid waste committee in hopes that at some point Maybe two years down the road, maybe five years down the road, they might bring it up when this account is so far in the hole that we have to pull money out of an emergency fund just to f 
just to catch back up again? Is is that what would have happened if I didn't start talking? No. Okay, that's. Thank you. I'm 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 glad that's not what would have happened. But a big chunk of that money is what Cindy is saying was to buy bags. I understand So you that. have to buy bags with basically you had zero at the start of mm -hmm. all of this program. But they were so essentially given free money out of a different fund, right? I mean, Not after we started the pay as you throw not, fund. Not we started that yeah. fund with zero and then okay. we had to spend $6,550 out of it. And we had zero to start. And that was in what year? It's the beginning of uh, in July of 17. Okay. In July of 17? Yeah, 17, 18. It, what, we bought the bags in, in June of 16. No, in June of 17. No, we bought the six fifty, the six thousand five fifty. We bought in August of 18. But when we started the fund, we started with zero. So the first year we didn't buy any bags out of there. But then all of a sudden we had to buy some at the beginning of the next year, and it's. We didn't have any. So when all of this started, was this designed to be a break-even program? Mm -hmm. Was this designed? Yeah, yes. It was designed to pay for itself. By law, it has to pay for itself. Okay. When, it, when it was started, it came out of the solid waste fund. Yeah. It was different. When it went to pay as you throw because you couldn't use solid waste, then it needs to be it needs to be break-even. Right, but it couldn't be break-even be because, because didn't we didn't have any startup right. money. You didn't have, you didn't have any money to buy the bags. Right. Did we have this discussion when Page You Throw started that we yeah. needed startup money, otherwise <coughs> we would be we totally nailed? And we wouldn't know that because we're select board members anyway. So. Well, we can't be expected to know any everything. I know. You know. I know. Nobody can do that. But we were, you know, your expenses were less than your income from much of the eighteen nineteen. Till you get three foot. Till you get into November. I mean, if ideally, uh, what would happen if we sold all of the? We have almost two hundred thousand dollars worth of bags over in the North School. I was going to say our inventory value is just I know. freaking outrageous. If we could just sell the bags, <laughs> right? But we're, and I do know there are people that's told me they've gotten dumpsters. Mm -hmm. So I, that's why I'm, you know, I'm looking at these figures in the last four or five weeks and seeing that going down. I don't know if it's because people are going another route or if it's just the time of year. Yeah, but as as uh, it is. Emily pointed out, I know February is traditionally a slow month. The winter months seem to be kind of the slower months in some cases. And, and you're right, people have gone to dumpsters, people have gone to driving their trash down to Triple T and you know, pay, and paying some of her neighbors are burning it. You can smell yeah. it at night. Yeah, the and yeah, and there's people that dump it over the bank and yeah, burn it, it. And yeah. you know, that there are those issues that come with a program like this. What's up, Em? Um, I I kind of want to argue the the lack of startup funds while there wasn't cash moved into. The That's fund. right, because you were on this fund when this all started, right? Or on this <laughs> committee. <laughs> So it's um, all your fault. It, sure, blame it. <laughs> I've got no accountability anymore. Um, the so while there was no cash that was put into the pay as you throw fund when we started, we did have the bags. We had the value. We had the inventory value of the bags. That's so the 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 Wynnum Solid Fund purchased, you know, the initial or at least for the, at the beginning yep. of seventeen, the. Bags <coughs> were purchased by the Wyndham Solid Fund. Correct. So that's kind of your startup fund, your your startup costs, because we didn't have to buy those bags. No, but, but we had to pay as you throw fund start with zero in it. Right. No, but I understand that. But you over. had, but you had, you had unearned revenue unearned sitting there at the fund because but the bags, yes, they were purchased by Wyndham Solid, but any money that was received right. by the sale of those bags went into pay as you throw Correct. fund. But then we also had the expenses going out every month. Then we started right. with and zero. Yeah, right. we, I mean, like I said, if yes. we could I sell all those bags over there, right. we'd be set and, and But that needs to be taken into account. I mean, when you're, I mean, not on like the, the cash flow statement that's in the town report, because that's cash flow. Right. Um, but on an accrual basis, you know, I mean, you, you do have the value of the inventory that we have on hand right. that is not sold yet. Right. That 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 is an asset you know I mean it's it, it's unearned revenue right so I mean 
we yes we're we're in the hole as far as cash flow goes we, but but, um, we the, but but we have we the, have asset, the asset, asset of the inventory and I mean yes you, you still have to pay those expenses even if you don't have the revenue right. and I understand that so I'm not I just wanted to kind of point out that we did have a little bit of a startup buffer because we had the we had the, the we had the bags you know right. we had the inventory to start up with so we have the inventory or I'm sorry you guys have the inventory so that's kind of a bonus, but if I remember back to when I used to do the inventory and everything, we had a ton of like small bags. We had like three pallets and they just that sell as well as never sold. Right. You know, I would take large bags out of there like like mad, yeah. but we had three pallets of small bags that never moved. So if you have an inventory that's not selling. Right. But it it's is still a cost. There's still money that's sitting there. That there's is there's still money that's sitting there. Account. Account. Yeah, yeah right. but and 10 years from now, right. if you don't sell the bags. Right. Well, hopefully by 10 years we get through the small bags. But I mean, that was a. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But I mean, there's that was that was a learning curve on our part. Yeah. I think, you know, because I think the, the, yeah. the huge stockpile that we have of the small bags is from the original. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the original yeah. purchase when we first started the well, or not even the AG throw, but when we started. And if you're buying the bags, yeah. that was yeah, that. Right. Those are all from the original so purchase because we just didn't know. Yeah. So what yeah. would happen if they lowered the small bags long as long as to just to get rid of some of that inventory and get some money in? That's not a instead horrible of, idea. Instead actually. of raising the price, yeah. Because who's going to pay the extra money for a small bag when you could fit twice as much? Right. I mean, it's and not a bad that. idea to entertain. Is is almost like having a sale yeah. on That's small bags. Yeah. Say buy five, or, buy five or more, and pay ten dollars instead of twelve fifty. A per yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not you gonna know, something like that. I'm not gonna commit. To I'm just numbers, giving. No, I'm just yeah, giving that as an it's example. It's not a bad idea. Oh, I mean, so one person's talk at a time. Sure. Yeah, it's yeah. all yeah. coming as one person. It's not a bad idea to have a sale on the small bags because we do. We have this large amount of inventory that we're not really selling. Yeah. And I mean, I, I know I buy the large bags and not the small bags, but you know, if they were on sale, I just might. We could get rid of some of that I'm, inventory. I'm sure some take of the, advantage of the some of the original yeah, so. inventory I'd be willing to bet is still over there. I'm sure it is. <coughs> so before you do, before you reduce prices of bags, please remember. This this is based on a per gallon because that was the smallest common denominator I could think of. We actually get charged by weight. Yes. So if we have a sale on bags, if people just buy more bags, that could come back and bite us in the tipping fees later. Just just putting that out there before you have a fire sale on <laughs> small bags. Oh, because because we're gonna have to pay on the other end. Mm -hmm. It's not the cost of the bags that's costing us. It's, it's, it's getting, getting rid of yeah. the garbage yeah. that's costing us. Mm -hmm. It's that we weight. To somebody else to do it. That hasn't been out to bid for a long time. And it, it I don't know that right. it has ever. I know, we don't have a contract that, that I can find with Triple T. So I'm happy to go through and do some research on that end um, yeah. and see what more information I can find. They were very good about not raising the rates, but. Well, they did raise something this year, right? For was yeah, it for compost dumpsters, bins. compost? They yeah. raised the price on those. Okay. But that comes that comes out of so the waste. So I, I guess we we all learned a, a couple of different lessons through this process of the select board falling short on assigning a a uh, someone to do the inventory. Um, and that our process works if it's followed. Um, I did tell you not to go to the select board. I actually asked you to go to Michelle during that meeting when we had an issue instead of coming to the select board. <coughs> so if that was done in this particular case back in August or you know when we first noticed the issue, we, we could have got way ahead of this thing. Um, but it wasn't. So here we are dealing with it now. So we learned something, you learned something. I learned way more about price per gallon and stuff of trash bags than I ever wanted to learn about in my life. And I hope that it all goes out of my head as soon as I walk out of this room tonight and I never think about it again and until we do this all over again.
<coughs> so. So we're gonna raise the price. That, yeah. Money. That being said, we what? need to make a decision on knowing that the 1718 spreadsheet that we have is free and clear of rate changes at all um, and shows us, you know, being in arrears, our 1819 looks to be about the same of about a $10,000 loss, which brings me back to Michelle's spreadsheet on 1718. Um, again, this was done on cost per cost per gallon because that's what we can do. The rates that we're looking at, and, and actually if you look up above as well, um, sorry, I'm gonna try to show you what I'm talking about. The revised pricing recommendations starting from there down, mm -hmm. you'll see two different grids, one on the left uh, with percentage numbers, one on the right with percentage numbers, and then down at the bottom uh, below the one on the left is, is kind of a basic calculation. So that one at the bottom is a basic calculation that it costs us um, 0.125 cents per gallon to do trash here in Vernon. Um, bringing a cost per roll to $22 for large and about $11 for the small bags. Now, taking into account up above is the sales mix, meaning how many large bags versus how many small bags that we sell, okay? Um, you look at your production costs, trip tipping and transfer costs, gives you your total cost. The cost per roll back in 1718 should have been, uh, excuse me, this is the cost to us, should have been $20.18 and should have been $14.79 to keep us even in 1718. Okay, we're doing a little bit better on paper so far this year, um, but if the trends continue how they are, it's, it's gonna end up being about the same. That being said, if we kind of average these two numbers out of the cost per roll, which I did, um, I don't know when I did it. I did it at some point. Um, that brings your uh, average cost per roll with the sales mix figured in at 1989 for the large and it brings your average cost per roll for the smalls at 1459 so we also have a, a loss to make up, I guess, and it's not necessarily a loss, it's more of the expense of the bags that, that we should, you know, try to get ahead of, essentially. So, obviously this has to, this has to break even, that's, that's just law. Pay as you throw has to break even. Um, so, I would like to follow Cindy's recommendation of $15 for the small bags, and I would like to do $20.50 for the large bags. Effective. Um, do you want to like, make it effective, Mark? Give them a week to adjust to this? I, I think um, what we had thrown back and forth via email, and obviously uh, we need to talk about that price increase as a select board. Those are just my suggestions. Um, is that we make it effective um, the week after town meeting. Um, so that would be... Uh, what, so what are the current prices right now? The current prices, are, the current prices are seventeen fifty for a large, so it'll be a $3 increase for the large bags. And it's twelve fifty for the small, so it'll be a $2.50 increase for the small bags. So this could be effective, say, March 11th. Um, we can make the announcement at town meeting um, and obviously get some marketing materials out um, to the town to make sure everybody's aware of that and to our vendors. But yes, Kevin. In the inventory, what, um, what's the inventory on the recycled bands? 
we How many do you have left? That's, you mean as far as like ones that haven't been passed out to, right. I have no idea. Nor does that really matter because that came out. Yeah, and there's no, okay. there's no reimbursement to those. I think if somebody wants an extra one, they get to pay okay. for it. Be but $14 yeah. Do you want something put up like at the town clerk's office? Yeah. Saying this so that people will be made aware or you'd want to wait for town meeting to announce it? No. Um, I think we need to start getting it out to the community right away as soon as we all agree on this again. You know, these aren't set in stone. We got to talk about this. Um, these are just my recommendations based on what I'm seeing. Um, but yes, we need to start letting people know right now. Obviously, we need to let our vendors know. And do we provide them signage? Everybody's signs are kind of the same. So I'm assuming we print them off a little eight and a half by 11 to hand to the Guilford store and the in the Colebrook store and to the rec department and the library because I think everybody's sign looks exactly the same I based on what I've seen. <laughs> so <laughs> I took a picture of a bag. <laughs> oh, okay. So we should probably in all rights, you know, the next time Kathy goes to do inventory, bring them a new sign with a new pricing and, and Colebrook as well and the library and the rec and you know that kind of thing and that will help. Um, maybe put a little effective date down on the bottom right hand corner so if any of our vendors get questioned about when this happened hey why did my bag prices go up well they increased it here in the effective dates on my little what signage right there why don't we make an effective um, April 1st yeah. just to do that just to keep accounting yes thank yeah. you Square. <laughs> I was thinking of that I'm going oh my god <laughs> no, not, yeah, not good. I think that we also need to figure this inventory system out and make sure that that is taken care of going forward and that this does not happen again. Now, the spreadsheets that you get from all the different people that you get them from, are they all the same? Everybody's made up their own. So would it be helpful for you for you to build one that, that works well with your system and send it to Gene and send it to Seth? and say this is what we, I need you to use going forward when you report that because yes, that. that would be that would be easier for you yes. so you're not trying to figure out everybody's different way that they're doing math yeah um, so uh, your recommendation of twenty dollars and fifty cents for the large bags yeah I buy the rolls I assume that most people do but if people want to buy one roll that makes it four dollars and ten cents mm -hmm. per bag not roll um, per bag, bag. and there are kind people. of a weird number just bringing that to your attention yeah. <laughs> um, do we sell just a bag instead of a roll the town clerk's just office sell. sells singles nobody else does just the town clerk's Why? office <laughs> I don't yeah. really there are, I see people come in and really just buy one or two bags. Yeah. That's okay. All they can but we made right. it so only the town clerk's office does that. Okay. And no one else yeah, does. Everybody yeah. else does. Because that makes our inventory a, a stinking nightmare. It does. Mm -hmm. Right, but I can picture like my grandfather using a small. Yeah, uh, and I understand so. that. <laughs> I understand that. I mean, I, I have a family of five, and I use one big bag every two weeks. Yeah. So. That's because you're burning it in the backyard, right? Yeah. <laughs> in your backyard. <laughs> So that's my first point. The second thing um, that I will just throw out there because I was on the select board when we increased prices, and I think Jeff, were you there with me? And, yeah, you were here too. Okay. Oh yeah. I couldn't remember if you were or not. Good times. Um, yeah. So putting that out there before uh, town meeting because some things may get voted very drastically differently than expected if um, if people see prices going up again so I don't think yeah. this is as drastic a, of an increase as we did before I can't remember I think the other one was, I think the it one was we did around was more, five yeah I think the one we did was much more drastic but we all know that trash is a very very sensitive topic in town um, yeah. and um, yeah I think the more education you can do beforehand because um, people people the may decide to you know, eliminate curbside and not fund, you know, they, they might choose to yeah. do that, so. I, I'm curious, does anybody in here have like a, a service come pick up their trash at their house? How much do you pay a month? It's thirty-seven fifty. So. But I also have recycle by them, so that's an extra ten dollars a month. Yeah. So so twenty-seven so twenty-seven fifty is what you pay essentially for your trash a month. 
So if you're using a roll of big bags, because there's five in a roll yeah. of big ones, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So that's over one a week. You're still mm -hmm. paying less at twenty dollars and fifty cents than you are paying for a service. Who do you use? Franklin. Franklin. So obviously we are all aware of the Franklins. So you're still paying $7 or less a month at these increased bag rates. And, and that's what's going to be important to communicate to the community is, is that, you know, take a look at, at, at what it's going to cost you to do it yourself, to, to have Franklin or Triple T or anybody else come pick it up. It's, it's around $25, $30, bucks and, and you confirm my suspicion that it was around $25, $30. Bucks. Now, if you're using... Is that a, a week or a month? A month. A month. Sorry that I'm incorrect. Oh, no. So no, it's still one a week. Right. It's still one a week. Yeah. So I am right. Um, but so it is less expensive if you're able to keep your trash to one large bag a month. A week. Excuse me, one large bag a week. And if my family can keep it to one every two weeks, and I have three little girls, <laughs> I think others can do it too. I mean, we got our recycling, so. And I would think people that use the um, roll-offs, I would think they'll cut down our costs for tipping. Mm -hmm. Have you, you know, the people that have, have their own roll-off container, have you noticed a decrease in our tipping fee since people have been doing that? Getting personal dumpsters. Oh, um, not really. There is an overall decrease this year, it looks like. It's trending toward less. Is it? Yeah, but it's also less bag sales. Because right. they charge trending. it by weight. Right. Right, yeah. but if, okay. but if those charging. two go down together, then... They should go down they, together, because exactly. yeah. if there's less bag sales, there's less weight, and there's less tipping fees. I'm the small bags that much. Um, I, I do believe that it's probably our elderly that are using the small ones. Um, Some, yeah. yeah. And I... Besides, we have a lot of them in inventory. Right. So, I mean, if we went up to 21 even on the big bags and did something different with the small bags so that we're not... Well, I tend to agree that since, in light of the fact that we do sell individual bags, they should be priced per bag and not per roll. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just... That high of a jump on the uh, small bags, I think we're... Well, $4 a bag for large would be $20 last year. Instead of 2050. Yeah. We'll have to break, break and then, a dollar. Right. And then $3 for a small per bag would be the 15 but if you think that's too high. That's a small bag, I don't know. Right now it's 1250 per bag. What but per bag. Two, two, here's, here's, the, here's the thing, though. Those... This is where it gets kind of complicated because they're charged by weight. And, and our average cost over these last, over last fiscal year and what we've been at so far this year is $14.79 for a roll of small bag. That's our cost. Mm -hmm. So you would be losing money on every single small bag sale. Yeah. Are you calling on me by looking at me? Yes. Um, so we've talked a lot about revenue, and we've kind of completely ignored the expense side. Um, one of the things that um, we talked about, I think, last year on the Solid Waste Committee was changing the possibility of um, schedule. You know, right now, everything is every week. Um, so they're running two trucks every single week. You know, but maybe it's more, but you know, they've got, it's, it's different trucks. You've got a recycling truck and you've got a trash truck. And I know that we have talked in the past at the solid waste committee level of changing that schedule, you know, alternating, doing recycling every week and trash every other week or alternating recycling on one week and trash the other week. Didn't um, we, didn't we start that we way? Did. Yes. We did. In yes. the very beginning? We, came we did. Well, um, we, half we did. Um, and then the other half. Yes. Was, yeah, there but was, then, then it was an issue of trash. I mean, you don't want to have to sit on a trash bag yes. during the summer for However, I will point out having their trash in the heat. 
Right. However, I will point out that a lot of the, the smelly stuff that goes along with trash is food scraps, Composting. which I will remind you all that according to Act 148, July 1st of next year, 2020, it's not allowed in, in the landfills anymore. So, you know, the whole composting thing is like, that's kind of a big task for the Solid Waste Committee. Welcome, Chris. I'm withdrawing at this point. <laughs> <laughs> it's too, it's too late. Too late. <laughs> Everyone should just raise pigs, right? That's right. <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, so just to keep that kind of in the forefront of your mind, July 1st, next summer, you know, a little over a year away, compost is not supposed to be. And if I, if I remember correctly, and there's a whole lot of loose <coughs> language in, in, in the, the law, but um, it's haulers must offer curbside compost. If, if they offer the curbside trash and the curbside recycling, the haulers must offer. It doesn't necessarily mean that there's some ambiguity as to whether or not the town has to contract it. The haulers just have to offer it. But that's a whole other discussion. So, but just so that requirement of uh, composting is only for those communities that have curbside pickup. I believe so. Yeah. Or then, or if you're if you're privately contracting, like well, you know, it's currently that way now. If you're offering curbside pickup, you have to offer curbside recycle. Yeah. Right. But and and now it's curbside compost. And this will be another layer of that. Yes. Right. Yes. And that's July next. Not this. So if the if the town of Vernon decides we're everybody's on their own, we don't have to worry about any of this. <laughs> This you don't have true. to worry yeah. about trash, you don't have to it worry about true, recycle, you don't have to worry about compost. Like I said, there's a lot of ambi ambi ambiguous language in the law because it's the haulers must offer the curbside. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily mean that just because they offer it, we have to accept it. Mm -hmm. So there's some ambiguity there and it, it there's we're not sure if, I mean, they have to offer it. Well, does our response to that offer can it just be the select board? Can it just be the wind and, you know, the solid waste committee? Does it happen at town meeting? Like, we're not exactly sure what the response has to be to that offer. Um, but, you know, just, I mean, you've, you've got a family of five. I've, you know, and you do one <coughs> trash bag every other week. You know, I'm doing about the same thing. Um, but I know the, the, the issue of smelly trash in the summertime, a lot of it is food scraps. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, if we can focus if we can do a little bit more education on the composting or you know whatever if we can encourage that then maybe we can look at cutting down on it doesn't necessarily decrease the tonnage numbers that Michelle has presented you know it doesn't it doesn't change the tonnage because I'm going to produce the same amount whether you pick it up every week or every other week it's still the same tonnage mm -hmm. but it cuts down on our transportation costs on our hauling costs which is you know that that's a fixed cost right now so like the tonnage you know I talked about earlier if we're selling less bags and we've got less tonnage those two are intertwined but the transportation costs are the same yeah. so I mean that that's another that's why there's been you know there's it's so hard to come to a decision at solid waste committee level of to what to do because there's so many um, options you know the mix and match you know do you every other week do you do every week bag prices and to try to figure all that out and of course everybody's very passionate about whether or not they want their trash picked up every week or every other week so just yeah. to kind of add that into the mix so that is uh, I when she mentioned that I knew that we started out did we just start out recycle every other week when trash every week right no, I no, thought it was all the same. It was so every one, other week. Ha half the town yeah. had A and B. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how it was done. All so right. one week, everything I think was done on one side, yeah. and then everything done on the other. Okay. Yeah. And some people putting on A side, was putting it on B side week. Mm -hmm. So rather than sitting there, they would pick it up. Yeah. So it's like yeah, I remember people posting on Facebook that like trash bags magically appeared in their front yards. Which they were like, oh, it's annoying, but it's they're going away anyway. But anyway, um, so that's that's something to consider too. And and obviously the solid waste committee is now kind of back working again, and has a a, a third member. Um, so is that something you guys can take on fairly soon, as far as? Um, looking at the difference and what 
tipping and transportation fees would be if we went to giving us some options obviously there's a million different ways to skin this cat of you know every other recycle every other trash every trash every other recycle you know all, all the above but to your point you know the biggest gripe that we heard about every other about every other trash was was the smell and that that's not a problem <laughs> coming down the road because it, well we need to make it not a problem yeah you know, exactly if, if we're going to continue with curbside you know by 2020 we've we have to we have to address the problem not just you know how to take care of so um and since we don't have a contract we can literally put this in effect with triple t you know next week kind of thing if the if you guys bring us some compelling evidence to make some changes and and the select board decides to go with them then we get a hold of triple t and say here's our new schedule so are and so you're wanting those figures before town meeting no 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 no, no. Oh, okay thank you. that's next week i'm not gonna do that to you okay um what we do need to do is we need to deal with what we have right now and and increase the bag prices then look at that um, look at those options on how to make this program more sustainable and I'm guessing we probably never decrease the bag prices again because the expensive hauling and everything else is just going to continue to rise anyway mm -hmm. and, and we're just going to be a little bit ahead of the curve for the first couple of years possibly if we keep bag prices at whatever we decide tonight um, and obviously there's a million other options from transfer transfer stations which i absolutely hate it, that option um but that's my personal feeling um and you know getting rid of everything all together and you go to you know a, a format like guilford does and and other surrounding well every other town in vermont or in southern vermont except for three right or in windham county except for three we're one of three that offer this service at all. Um, so. That's cheaper than hiring out and it's more convenient. <laughs> they still come to your door. Do they not come it's to your door cheaper. for thirty-seven fifty a month? Yes, they do. Yeah, see? It's cheaper. It is, but it doesn't, uh, it's not on the back of the taxpayers. And uh, for right. those that don't want to use yeah. it, you know? So. Anyway, so yes, so um, well, I mean, so Chris being a member now, um, obviously he's going to be booked through uh, town meeting. So um, I can skip that. <laughs> <laughs> can, can you I, guess? If I couldn't, you could. <laughs> can I you guys pick you up and shoot bring you. for end of March, end of April, maybe? Yeah, we'll we'll try we'll. Um, We'll before the before the fiscal year I want to have yes I want to have all the information so that we can make a decision by June 30th I guess yeah. and it's going to take us some time obviously to to do to do that we'll try and coordinate a meeting for like mid to late March um, okay so I can't can get through <laughs> <laughs> your book that day. <laughs> meeting in your house. super busy that day <laughs> we didn't tell you what day you were voted in I heard yeah. <laughs> He's, he's got to burn his trash. <laughs> he can't come. <laughs> All right. So let's, can, let's continue our discussion about the problem at hand, and we'll look down the road to the Solid Waste Committee that's now back in action to, to make our problems less and less. Um, so there's a proposal out there to go to 1450 on the small bags and go up to 21 on the big bags. Um, to help those that we believe right, just go back would to the use 20, it. 50 and, and 15. That's fine. Just go with where you were at. Well, I have a question. If how long before they degrade? Like we've got those small ones set since the beginning. How long before your grandfather picks up one and everything falls out of it? Mm -hmm. um, That's so where I'm having a hard time. Yeah. wrapping my head around this whole thing is that if th there's how much in inventory over there let me find that. I, have it in my email I think there's a hundred and 137 cases of large and 79 cases of small right do you have a dollar amount on all of that the amount 
of value if we sold all of them for large is 119,875 and for small it's 79,375 and and I have an answer to your trash bag because I just googled that and so normal plastic items can take up to a thousand years to decompose but plastic bags we use in our everyday life take 10 to a thousand years to decompose so, so out, of, <laughs> out of those numbers that you just gave me, <laughs> how, how much of that was actually <laughs> purchased from Wyndham Solid Waste before it went to pay as you Solid form? Waste bin? Yes, I'm sorry, yes. Um, this, all the small came from the Solid Waste okay. Bin. The large are, um, most of the large that we have now, that all of the large we have now came from the last one we purchased, which was in August of 18. So if those small bags started selling, that's kind of free money somewhere along the way, isn't it? Because we didn't purchase those bags. That was purchased and essentially gifted to us. From the solid waste. Well, it's costing us $1.31, say. I mean, I'm guessing I wasn't here when we bought them. I, that's and what and the I understand that. I'm sorry to interrupt. And I understand that. But if we take the, the bag cost out of that and we just factor in I mean, then those bags don't have to go up as much yeah, to but the equal the same amount. The, the issue is, is you have to replace the bag. You have to replace the inventory and have that. But not for like 10 years. <laughs> well, yeah. I understand that, but you have to. Like the first half are getting money. There, there's got to be some sort of money. I, I understand what you're saying, and, and we break even on what but, we have but, going on, but, but then we run into zero dollars to pay it, buy new bags. That's fine, but if we watch that inventory and we get halfway through that, and then we say, all right, now we can increase those to try and get rid of some of that inventory, because those ones are not selling as much, and they're not going to have to be replenished as quickly, then we don't have to jump up so drastically on the small bags, because that's going to break out somewhere. <coughs> the big bags we can certainly go up on because those are the most used, those are the bigger tonnage, those are the ones that we've purchased out of town money. But the smaller bags, I don't feel that we would have to do that until we got maybe halfway through the old inventory that's there. Okay. Because we have almost $200,000 worth of bags sitting over there. Right. Exactly. Hold on. Let me... Uh, and I'll say, I've got 30 small size trash bags and the large ones not two. Yeah. So it's more like... You know, so it's it's not unreasonable for the tra the large trash bags to be three times the cost of the small one. I fit three bags in the large ones. I don't. I think I'm over on the weight, but they keep picking them up. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's it almost seems if we if we took some from the reserve fund and put it in there, we wouldn't have to increase it in because we have two hundred thousand dollars of inventory sitting exactly. there. I think if we increase these bags and more and more residents have already begun to look at other sources, whether it be dumpster or paying for their own thing, that we're going to see these sales decrease and we're going to be sitting here again a year from now saying this still isn't evening out. Mm -hmm. We need to go up on prices again and we're just going to be shooting sure. ourselves in the foot over and over. I don't necessarily support a price increase across all of this here. what uh, large uh, and small or right. both of them or? certainly the small I mean if those aren't selling we have to figure out a way to move that inventory and recoup some of that without because mm -hmm. we don't really have any money sitting so don't in raise, there in the small bags. don't raise the price of the small bags but the large bags we sell quicker I understand that we have to rebuy them, but not for a while. there's nothing left in there. Now we're back to zero. <coughs> we don't recoup the money. So, we but we don't have to buy any if it. we're not selling it. Well, at the current rate we're going, they'll be gone in four years. Okay. That's so if we went up to $13, that's putting 50 cents per roll into a reserve fund to buy new bags and two then, years from now as opposed to four years. Because and those you have to take the cost of those bags out of the numbers that you've given us because we didn't pay for those bags. But you're going to have to replace I the I understand bags. that. So if we go up the 50 cents on that, then you're 
you're almost halfway to getting a new roll of bags to replacing your bag. It's a dollar thirty-one. I'm guessing because that's what the large bags were. I don't know what the small ones were. I'm guessing it's not a lot different because the printing cost would be the same. It's so around a dollar thirty-one per roll. So the other thing that I that I want to point out, um, and and again, I just did some quick math. So follow me, and then I want you to look at the percentages again too. So at twelve dollars and fifty cents, which is the current price for a roll of small bags, we would lose two dollars and nine cents. Um, and, and obviously this is keeping in the bag cost and everything else. If you want to pull the bag cost out, you're losing 78 cents per roll. Pulling the bag cost out. You're losing 78 cents per roll at 12.50 for a small roll. Okay? At 20.50, which is what we're discussing for the roll of the large bags, we're seeing a 61 cent gain Essentially, it's 61 cents more than what it costs us on average for every single large roll. So, you're still losing. But if you, but if you look at the percentage of the small bags from 2017, 18 to 1819, we're actually increasing the amount of small bags that we're selling and we're decreasing the large amount of bags that we're selling. If, and that's where the that's where the the, the sales mix comes into into play. Um, seventy eight point four eight percent and seventeen eighteen was large. That's dropped to seventy seven percent and increase on the small back side to twenty one point five two to twenty three. So if that trend continues and we're losing seventy eight cents per roll on those small bags and we're selling more of those. And we're only gaining at 61 cents per roll of the large ones, which we're starting to sell less of. We're going to be in a world of hurt in the end. And and I understand the inventory side of it, and I understand that we need to um, to to sell what we have on hand, and that there's value there. But I, but I really think going into anything with a loss is not a great idea. And knowingly going in with a loss, because like I said, even at, even at even if you take the bag cost out, which is a dollar thirty-one, we're still losing seventy-eight cents per roll at twelve fifty right now with our small bags. Where do you get the dollar thirty-one per bag? Um, that's twenty-six point two six two zero cents per bag that we purchased. It's on the invoice that yeah. we provided. Right. So the one thirty-one is the tipping cost. That types of, no one thirty-one is the printing cost. So it's, it's the printing cost. It's to put, the five. put the pretty little seal in the town of Vernon on the outside. That's of the what bag. we pay to actually purchase the bag. So the tip slash trans is not tipping. No, no, no. The production cost yeah. is the printing of the bag. So this matches to that. So, okay. so that's not a okay. No, that's two separate okay. charts. One is with it. One is the cost per um, taking into account the mix of small versus large. The other one is a straight point one two five cents a gallon. Okay. Just reading this. Um, so, what would you on on your line of thinking, Chris? If, if where is where is the break point where we start charging more for the small bags to make sure that we have enough money to replenish the inventory? Because you're you're saying let's keep it at the the twelve fifty and then at some point once the inventory gets to X, we we pop it up to you know fourteen fifty or whatever the case may be. To make I, mean, sure I, I guess I'm even. just I'm stuck looking at it from the inventory side of it where if we're looking at those bags are sitting over there for four years. They've already been there for three years. Are they going to be worth it anything in four years? I mean, is that even going to be a sellable product in four years? Mm -hmm. and, and my world is inventory, so that's why I'm looking at it that way. And, and I can understand from the financial side of it that that's not necessarily the appropriate way to look at it in a sense, but if we get two years from now and those bags are no good, then we're still all at, at all of that money and we still have to come up with money to repurchase all of those bags again. So I'm trying to look at it from that light. 
Yeah, and and yeah, I see what you're saying. I don't I don't think we're gonna have that issue because they're plastic, and and I don't think they're and you know I don't know. I I can't predict that any better than I can predict the weather tomorrow. But you can't, you can't also predict how eventually the mice are gonna figure out they can live in there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there, there's, there's 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 all kinds of there's all kinds of crazy variables within this, and but that's why I, I Emily, are those just straight plastic, or are they some type of biodegradable breakdown quicker? I don't I'm just curious. Here. I don't know. All right, I, I, I don't I'm really answer that not either. Because they can sit out in the in the weather. In the, okay. In the, you know, they're not like like the compost bags. As soon as they get wet, they start to yeah. crumble. I would assume. So, I mean, I guess if we got to go up on the price, we've got to go up on it, but I just, I think yeah. we're going to be stuck with something somewhere along the road here. And so, again, going back to inventory issues, small bags, selling small bags. Um, because we have such an inventory, if we sell them at a loss for a certain period of time, no one going in, we're going to lose money on small bags. What if we kept them down until half the inventory is used up, down to 40, 40 cases? I mean, I think we could go up to maybe 1350 on those and 21 on the big bags. Do those numbers change to 61? You're up 61 on the big bags. At what what cost are you figuring that? The 20 2050. 2050 is so if we want up another 50 cents to 21 even, we want up a dollar on those. That evens out, or I mean, you're still in the positive, not a huge amount, but yeah. And the and the other thing about it as well is that. You know, I, I understand from the inventory side what you're saying is, is that it's okay if we lose money, but the pay as you throw at the end of each year has to pay for itself. We can't. That's that's just law. So, so they, 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 the, the state the doesn't care about our inventory. The state cares about us based coming on out even. That you disregard the cost of gave us it. The if bag you did 21 and you did 1350. Where does that put those same numbers? Um, 21 and 13. Hold on just one second, please. again because I didn't write down my averages. And while we're waiting on that, um, going forward, if you, uh, whoever you would send your emails to on the solid waste, mm -hmm. if you would send one to me as well, uh, that way somebody on the select board can have some correspondence about that. I would appreciate that. Thank you. What was your proposed 1350? Okay. Okay. I am like the worst person in the world at math. Well, you have why, to go why am that's I, why I, I was letting you go with the same thing you were already trying to do here. Why am I the one that's doing this? Uh, that's so funny. If, if my math, if my high school math teacher knew that I was doing this right now, he'd shake his head. Yes. Be like, you're having him do that? <laughs> Yeah. 
and to come up with seven cents. Yes. Yes. And now I'm really going to throw one at you, Josh. Change that, no, cha please, change please. that small bag to a thirteen seventy-five. No, I hate your Thank cuts. you, Emily. <coughs> you it's me, Josh, not yeah. Okay. It's going to make everybody too. else's life easier. Okay. For the per bag cost. Thirteen seventy-five. Right. Let's don't open those tabs. Mm -hmm. On those numbers, we would make our bill this year. We, we would be in the black this year. But we're already in the black this year. So. Just say it. I'm sorry, on what numbers, Michelle? On those prices. Which you can do last nothing year. Nothing for expenses for February. <laughs> There's like nothing there. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's true. I did it. There's a few. You're going to plan on a few thousand. Um, I have, All right. I have so you're ready? Ad. Yep. All right. So at 1375. Um, okay, so this is 1375. And the other one was 2050, right? No, nope, 21. 21, sorry. I think I, had, I think I did that right. <laughs> Well, if you're more than 61 per, uh, yeah, 61 up on the big bags, then you did it right. Okay, so my big bags, the big bags are up a dollar eleven. Okay. In that scenario. Yep. Don't. <laughs> and then, with the small bags at thirteen seventy-five, they would show a loss of eighty-four cents. If you take the dollar thirty-one out of that you show a, a, a gain, or excuse me, a loss of 47 cents, I think. Okay, but if you kept the bag prices in there, we've more than broke even, right? Because you're down, you're up, so there's Correct. 20, 30 cents in there, so yeah. you're still breaking even at those numbers. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you, you're breaking even at the expense of your inventory, yes. Where you're coming from at the same time. Just use a different word than loss. <laughs> I'm sure there's some Deficit? I'm sure there's some accounting term. Deficit? That better. <laughs> Deficit's bad too. <laughs> Emily, you got any suggestions? A better word than loss? No. Yeah, there's, there's no. I use. Yeah, oh, there's, okay. there's no good. Let's just not keep score. There's, yeah. no, there's no way to make me feel good about this. What if we give you a trophy? No, oh, please don't give me a trophy. I don't need a participation trophy. Unless it's at a loss, then it's I won't. <laughs> it's a truck. It's a truck. I think that's fair to the ones, because the people that are buying these little bags. Yeah, but, but do we know that? We're making an assumption there, too. I, I mean, it, w w I don't know. You guys are in the town office. You're in the library. The The folks that are buying small bags, are, there, are they typically elderly folks, or are they 20 years old, and they just don't create a lot of trash because... I don't know. I, I'm not in these places to know. I would say for some people, it might be one person in the household yeah. and buy a small one, and that way they can get the bag out every week. Sure. Some people actually buy a combination of both sides. But I mean, I, we're, we're we're making these assumptions that that right. that I, uh, our our elderly populations are are buying all the small bags or, or majority small bags and 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 we don't want to hurt their um their pockets which which i completely agree with i understand I and mean, living on a fixed income is well, put yourself in their place there's one of you no that's what i'm saying you know that's, so that's what i'm saying they are. Right. well when, when you sell bags you can ask them how old they are 
<laughs> so you have to you have to sign a waiver to, <laughs> to buy a small bag. You have to be What's over sixty. Hey, actually, <laughs> give me a senior discount. Senior discount. I'm not kidding. Yeah, I'm, I'm not I kidding. In the town clerk's office, and I've sold single bags. It was to people that were my age yeah. and about. So it it wasn't young. Uh, it wasn't yeah. elderly. Young yeah, people. It was very young people. <laughs> so. Yeah. So I, I know this is kind of an accounting nightmare, but why not look at that? If, the if neighbors will get their elderly if, neighbors to buy <laughs> their bags for them. So what? Yeah. So what? We're talking about drugs but, here. But if, <laughs> if you get AARP mail, you get a discount. That's Get Sorry, 50. I don't know. 50, that's, that's at age 50. Okay, let's yeah. let's not do that then. Let's do like 65. Why wow, you're getting close to a discount? I'm nowhere near a discount. What if you were to raise the price of buying a single bag higher, so then it would encourage them to buy a roll instead of a single bag? Yeah, but that's the but the town clerk's office is the only one that that does that, so it really doesn't encourage anybody outside of those folks that that purchase at the town clerk's office to to make to a change I don't know those are the numbers that I wanted to look at uh, anybody else please weigh in because this is uh, like this is painful yeah, no, no. <laughs> Math based on the 17 18 numbers with the 21 and 1350, we just barely make it. Well, we're at, we went we're at 1375. I did it with a 1350. Yeah, and if you add in, I'm a big proponent of changing the schedule and doing every other week. Me too. That you know, that I think that actually does cut the transportation costs in half. I think that's a true cut it in half from the last time we talked about it with Norm. Um, then you've got, you know, a whole lot of black going on. Yeah, and if you're concerned about the smell, then do it every other week from September 1st. Or drop it off at your neighbor's house on the other, <laughs> on their week. Right. It happened before. Well, you know, half the year it's every week, and in the summer months and it's stinky. Well, and like you said, the, in, in a year from now, it's not a, right, not it's not an issue, really, other than diapers. Stop having kids. Um. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay. laughs> everybody at the table agrees. <laughs> Why can't everybody else agree? Uh, no, so twenty one and thirteen seventy five. What's what's the thought on that? I think it's a good number. It's fine to me. We got to do something. So what about this every other week thing? Further down the road? Or yeah, I, that's that's Maybe something the next that. Fiscal year. <coughs> yeah, that's Not tonight. That's something that the the solid waste committee should bring as a recommendation that we will get prior to the end of the fiscal year, and we'll make the change. Like we don't have a contract with Triple T, and actually it may not be a bad idea when we make the decision to put this out to bid. Um, all at the same time, and we may find a hauler that does better for us in, in every way, shape, and form. I, I don't know. Um, Triple T's been, been fairly good to us, so I don't, uh, I don't have any ill will towards them, but the, as expenses continue to rise, we need to do what's fiscally responsible for the town as well. Is there some towns around us that do stickers on bags as opposed to having to purchase the bags? And is that price different? Some towns do stickers. We just like Greenfield do stickers? I don't remember. Um, Westminster? Westminster. I know, I don't think I was on the... Was we did look at we, that. Well, I think the, the biggest concern that I can remember is that, and it's so sad to say this, is that people can steal stickers off. stickers off of their neighbors. That was that was the biggest concern wow. that we talked about. With I would them. like to think that people had better things to do in their life. Well, than they, steal they, stickers off from trash. But but think about Ooh. those people that are burning trash now. That's true. And those people that are dumping it in Indian Point and various other places. Yeah, I mean, just 
just bury it. <laughs> but no, I mean, that's right. that's why we steered away from the stickers. I do remember that. I don't know that I was on the select board, but I remember that conversation happening because I think um, Trend actually quoted us this the sticker prices here in town um, for the bags at one point, along with maybe a couple other people. So and I, I want to say that it was a select board discussion, not a. Uh, Solid waste committee discussion, so I don't know if looking back at yeah, I don't. <laughs> trying to, because I mean, maybe if 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 Trent quoted us prices, um, you know, I, it's I'm worth pretty sure that they did, but I, I really don't know. But then, yeah. Uh, can I make a motion on this so we can? Uh, well, the, the yeah, the other the other side to it too is that with a sticker, uh, I use a 33 gallon bag use a 15 gallon kitchen bag and you're paying the same amount for your sticker as I am buy a bigger bag I'm just smarter than you that's not that's my all. problem at this point but I mean so this okay. I, I think what we got going on makes a lot of sense all right I move that we increase the price of large bags per roll $21 a roll and increased the price for a roll of small bags to $13.50 75. 75 cents thank you uh, effective April 1st. Second. Moved and seconded to increase large bag prices to 21 per roll, small bag prices to 1375 per roll. All in those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. We are done with that. I think we also need, need to figure out. Yeah, I think we need to figure that inventory out and have something yeah. presented to us at some point about. I mean, that's a so our nightmare. You said that you have an inventory system yes. now in mind. Yes, we do. So, and We've who are those folks that are in charge of that inventory now? Right now, um, Heather and Tim went over and counted them to see what we have. Yep. Tim has put a sheet of paper over there. He's letting me know when, when, but, but when um, cases go out, and then every month we're going to go over and check the sheet against what I have in, in my on my records to make sure that they're okay so the you and you and Tim are we checking Tim inventory yes okay thank you thank you and, uh, and you're gonna send out a spreadsheet to everybody else so you're not trying to decipher everybody's yes. mess and then it's easier for you to work with yes. good and maybe that might eliminate some of our our issue as well who knows all right. I move we adjourn. We're adjourned. <laughs>